Okay, today uh, today we did a uh, Toyota 4.0 um, V6 engine. I think it was in a Toyota Tundra today. Uh, but it's also available in the 4Runner, in the Tacoma, Tundra, um, I think the uh, V6 Highlander also. Um, please watch this video a few times. Uh, try not to skip, thinking that uh, I've done this all before. Just watch the video, watch it a couple times. Even before you start the project, just watch it from start to finish. It might, might be a long video. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being after we edit it, but um, just follow the steps and you'll be fine. Try not to skip. Try not to. Uh, uh, yeah, just watch it. This is just, just a bit more complicated than the other ones we've shown. Yeah, thank you. Okay, time for the big boy. We have a uh, 2006. What, 2006 Toyota Tacoma 4.0 V6. I'm gonna do the head gasket on this guy. First thing, remove these two nuts. Two clips right here. This guy, ten right here, ten right there. Hey, gotta remove the splash guard so it drains properly. Uh, this customer's missing a couple of bolts, but get the three in the front, and then two in these little holes on the bottom. Right there and on the other side. Next remove the clips on this. Break that clip. 10 millimeter right here. 10 millimeter right here. And remove that clamp right there. Time for the intake. Remove this clip. Remove this bracket right here. Two 12 millimeter bolts. Remove this bracket right there. It's uh, same thing, 12 millimeter bolts. Take out this hose clamp right here. Don't need to take out the whole thing. Remove that clip. Take off the vacuum line for the AC. You have 12 millimeter bolts on the ends and Allen's right here. They look like they're eight millimeter Allen's. Remove that clip right there. And this guy, this guy will come up. Don't forget to remove that hose right there. Okay, before you remove the upper intake and the throttle body, you need to drain the radiator. Once you get the splash guard off, you can see the, the little wing nut drain right there. Once the radiator is drained um, substantially low, you can remove these two coolant lines for the outer control valve. Then you can remove this upper intake. To remove these, just pull the clips up. We have other videos uh, in this as well. Get a nice little grip. Pull it up. Get the nose. Get those ones. And our handy dandy close pliers. Twist, grip, and pull. Same thing. If you're worried about mixing these up later, you can just mark one of them with white out. Or just use a marking that. There we go. And the intake is ready to come up. Okay, next remove the upper radiator hose. This way, just do that clamp and that clamp. Okay, next uh, use, I like to use a 12 gear wrench to remove the radiator uh, fan right here. Um, it's easier when the belt is still on, you get some resistance for the nuts. You have four 12 millimeter nuts, but um, if, um, if space is limited, in your case, uh, once you remove these 12 nuts, then remove the four tens that hold on the shroud. You pull up the fan and the shroud as one. Larger screwdriver, and sort of just wedge it between. Rock it back and forth, it'll come, be sure. Uh, be careful not to damage the radiator. And now, sorry, I'm just pull it up nice and simply. This radiator fan shroud does have a little notch right here that you can pull off. That lower section yeah, right lower there. Section. So you can actually pull the shroud up by itself, but I hate dealing with these uh, metal clips. 
a lot of times they go flying and uh, when you put them back in they don't really stick very well so we just pull it up as an assembly now we can take off the belt remember we needed it to remove the uh, radiator fan uh, nuts just to make the job easier so get a uh, long handle ratchet preferably 14 millimeter socket this is the tensioner right here so we're gonna put it on and you're gonna go back you pull the pulley off and the belt next is going to be the harmonic balancer bolt Next, we're going to do the harmonic balancer bolt. Now, we understand that not everybody wants to take off the radiator. You can't really use a gun to take that off without removing the radiator. So, what we're going to do is, we have a 22 millimeter socket, a breaker bar. It's braced below the frame, it's not hitting the hoses. While this is in place, our good old friend Jack, is going to bump the engine with the ignition. Just turn forward and turn back. Go ahead, Jack. Cool. And there we go. The bolt is now loose. Next is going to be the coils and the valve covers. Coils, 10 millimeter bolts. Valve covers as well. Uh, the perimeter is just all 10 millimeter bolts around it. You have a little bracket to take off, just go ahead and take it off. Little pieces of a uh, hose to pull up. I recommend removing the rest of these brackets and putting them aside as well with the 12 millimeter nuts at the bottom of them. Now the valve covers off, continue taking off all the clips, the variable valve timing, cam timing, uh, sensor, or cam position sensor, sorry. Uh, same on that side, fuel injector wires, uh, there's going to be one wire, this one right here, you won't be able to get to unless you take off the AC, this is the crank position sensor. Uh, you can choose to either leave it on or we'll remove the AC later on and then you can disconnect this wire. But for the most part, disconnect these and then drape it all up and I'll tuck it under where the hood meets. Get the ground wires that are attached to the head, this one and that one. Also, there should be one on the other side. Now that those wires are out of the way, next is going to be the lower intake. We're going to disconnect the fuel line right there, pop off that um, gray plastic piece, and you'll see little tabs, squeeze those. And we have a whole bunch of 12, 12 sockets. Don't worry about the rounded security uh, bolts. Just remove those, and it'll come straight up. Got both fuel lines disconnected. We have all the... Uh, 12, um, 12 millimeter bolts up, this guy is ready to come up. Now, like I said, do not remove, don't bother with these round bolts with the security bit on the inside. You'll need to bring those up. There you go. Okay, next you're gonna take off the, uh, the uh, thermostat housing, the water outlet, and remove this line and that line from the oil filter housing. Remove this clip, pull the hose off. Remove that clip, pull the hose off. That clip as well, pull the hose off and this radiator hose clip. Slide it down, pull the hose off. Then you have 10 millimeter bolts going all the way around. Should be, I believe, four of them. We're gonna take those off now. Okay, quick accounting. There's gonna be five of the 10 millimeter bolts to pull off. There's two up top and there's three right um, on the bottom, right below uh, the thermostat. And once you get those off, then this thing will wiggle. However, the O-ring here kind of it wants to hold this on nice and tight. So instead of just pulling with all our might, just use a little pry. We use our uh, trusty screwdriver. And we're going to go probably against the metal. Be sure not to damage the variable valve timing solenoids. Let's go down here. Just going to pry right up against where the edge of that is. You're going to shake it. Come right up. Be sure not to drop this onto the radiator. So we're going to take off the oil filter housing. You have uh, three of the 12 millimeter bolts. You have a, uh, a 12 stud and there's one on the back end as well, right here. So five total. Now I have those, um, those two nuts and the three bolts loose and we're out. I 
drape uh, paper towel below this so when you bring it off, it doesn't just leak oil all over the pulleys. As it is going to leak substantially. Just like that. And that's from the coolant portion. And put it in the Okay, next you're going to remove the three pulleys. One, two, three, actually four. Sorry, forgot about that one. Um, these three come off the regular way. This bolt right here is actually reversed. So what we're doing to loosen it up, we're going to turn the bolt to the right. It's going that way, like we're trying to tighten it. It's reverse thread. But the other three are regular thread. I forgot to mention the lower, this one right here, is actually a little different. It doesn't stick out as far as this is the lowest one. The other ones are the same, look like this. Power steering pump, pretty self-explanatory. You have two bolts uh, just fit between the pulley. One bolt here. And one bolt a little lower. Both are 14 millimeters. It's loose. Once you remove the bolts all the way, you can pull it to the side. Water pump, this long piece right here. Uh, it's basically held on by a bunch of 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter bolts of different lengths. So as you pull them out, um, be sure to mark or indicate which bolts came out of which hole. Don't forget the ones up here for the other side house. It's off, time to remove the alternator. Two 14 millimeter bolts. Don't forget to disconnect the positive on the alternator right here. Actually, before you do that, remove the positive on this battery. Probably should have did it to begin with. Oh uh, no, we needed to crank off the uh, harmonic balancer bolt. It's going to take some wiggling to remove the alternator, but it'll come right out with those two bolts. Next is gonna be the AC. You have, should be four 12 millimeter bolts going in this direction. One, two and there should be two more at the bottom. Now that we have the AC, uh, the bolts loose on the AC compressor, it doesn't really move out of the way because these AC lines are held on with these tins right here, just to keep them from swaying. So we're just gonna gun those guys up real quick. And that'll allow us to move the AC Now we get to the bolts that hold this bracket in. The 14 millimeter bolts, I believe there's five or six of them. They go into the engine this way. This does have to come off. Now while Jack is removing that bracket that holds on the AC compressor, time to start taking off the bolts to hold on the timing cover. You have many bolts along the um, perimeter of the timing cover to remove. So um, we'll do a quick accounting after we remove them all. We have the nuts at the bottom. But very important, you have bolts coming up, the four of them coming up from the oil pan into the tank. Those do need to come off as well. This is the orientation. This is how it looks on the side of the engine. You have one, two, three, four, five bolts. Okay. You have this one is longer than the other ones. The rest of the four are the same length, about this long. So just pull it off, put the bolts back in it, store it like this out of the way. Okay, Jack's working on the lower timing cover bolts coming up from the oil pan. Uh, let me talk about these guys right here. Okay, you have this bolt right here, and this one, these are both 12s. And you have these cam sensors. There's no need to take off these cam sensors, just use a regular wrench to pull these bolts out. As far as the variable valve timing elements, once you pull that 10 millimeter out, you should be able to just twist this out of the way so you don't have to actually pull it up and risk getting debris in it. The, the, these and these can just stay with, uh, this can stay with the timing uh, cover and this can stay with the head. Okay, now the bolts are out on the timing cover. Um, do another quick look or another more detailed look and make sure there are no bolts left in, especially no bolts that are tight because uh, this timing cover sometimes is real tight and um, uh, it'll feel like it's tight because of bolts or it'll feel like it's tight because of the silicone. Uh, you just don't want to be prying and finding out later on that there was a bolt that was still in there 
I might have broken off something. The good pry point is going to be right here. Get our screwdriver. Take the time nice and slowly. And this one, there's really no point for the screwdriver on that side. So we're just going to uh, pry against the cams. Don't pry against this uh, thin plastic piece. So we're going to get this off and get it out. Now we have a good pry point here. But up here, they didn't really make a good pry point. So what we're going to do is get some 90 degree needle nose. There's a little spot right here. Just going to pry that. This is the side's already done. And hopefully it all goes good. We'll be able to pull this guy. Might need uh, some help pulling it. Okay. Okay, let's go over the timing marks real quick on this engine. There are three colored links. There's a yellow one right there. The yellow one corresponds with the dot. That's the thing you can't see with the paint in the way, but there's a little dot imprinted right there. There's no other dot on the other, just right there. You have the orange link that corresponds with this little mark right here. You can see, not this one, not that one more obvious one right there. And also right here, the other orange mark is gonna be right there between these two. Okay. Now in the cam timing, see the little dot right here, it's gonna match with the little dot on the camera right here. Behind this there's another one. It'd be easier to see it's going to line up with that mark right here. You can even see the green paint on the two of this cam. Same thing goes. As long as those are lined up and this lines up, they're good. Once you have the chain off, this guy right here, remove uh, just two 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, right now Jack is removing the down pipes on the exhaust. Uh, there are three 14 millimeter bolts on this side. And there are three 14 millimeter bolts on this side. You can choose to remove the exhaust manifold if you like. There are just a bunch of 12s. Uh, but we actually aren't going to. We're going to pull the exhaust up with it. Uh, we are going to, however, make sure that the bank one um, and bank two upstream O2 sensors are disconnected. While he's doing that, I'm going to start taking off the cams. What did do is they stamped these guys so you can see so you can see which area they want the only thing you need to do is mark which side it was on so you can get some white out and just mark all the ones that were on the passenger side so as you see this one right here it's the i2 so that's the intake cam and it's the second one back so it'll be one two three four these ones say e it's hard to see in the video but you can see e2 that means there's one two, three, four. With the arrow, a little arrow right there, facing towards the front of the engine, always. Arrow right there, I2, facing towards the front of the engine. So just mark which ones were on the passenger side, which ones were on the driver's side, and put them all back in the same spot. The way to keep it organized is, I pulled the, uh, uh, the camshaft caps and bearings off, and I kept them in the same order that I pulled them. You can see exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, and those are both the same. Passenger, driver's side, along with the tensioners I just left right in the middle. Now that the cams are off, uh, time to do the head bolts. Uh, we have head bolts right here. Uh, each head should have uh, eight of them, I believe. And it's gonna be a size 12 triple square. This guy right here. So uh, it's hard to focus, but that's it. Size 12 triple square. It'll be right in there. They are all pretty much open and accessible except for this one right here. You can see the head bolt there, or this Babbitt bearing is in the way. So uh, easy way to get that off. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. Do not 
mess with the mating surface of the Babbitt bag. So just right here, just pull it off. And now you'll get to the head bolt below. Oh, uh, don't forget to just pull these guys back and out of the way a little bit. You don't have to remove them all the way. Just pull them back far enough so you can get to the head bolts with the, uh, with the triple square. You have this uh, coolant uh, pipe that goes across. You're gonna have six 10 millimeter nuts, six of them. Take those off. You just push it out of the way. You don't actually have to remove the hose and pull the whole thing out. Most likely, you're going to have to climb into the truck to get to those uh, nuts and bolts on that, uh, that cross pipe. Okay, so once you get the, the two bolts and four nuts off of this piece, um, we have to be able to push it back. But this O-ring is a little bit tighter than the front one. So it's easier to actually get a six inch extension on the on your ratchet. And down, you can look down in between the two heads and you will see uh, two 10 bolts on little brackets holding on this pipe. You see that the pipe just moved. So once you get those up, um, you can move the pipe freely. Push it back as a complete unit. Grab that bolt. Okay, so once you remove the, the tens holding on the brackets for the pipe going in between the two heads, you'll be able to use that pipe to push all that you just did off, just like that. Now it's clear for the heads to come up. Just leave it right there. Next are the head bolts. Now, just like our other videos dealing with Toyota, when you pull the head bolt out, be very careful. Use the magnet to pull the washer out with it. You do not want the washer sliding down into the engine because on these engines, it will. So use a magnet if you can. Pull up the bolts by the washer. Now on this head, it's still gonna be the same size head bolts, the 12 point triple square. But before you do the head bolts on this side, remove these two 12 millimeter bolts. They aren't on this side of the engine, but they are on this side, these two bolts, and then remove the head. Okay, all the head bolts are removed. Time to pop the head up. Cool. The rest is just gonna be manhandling the head out of there. Okay, the block is clean. Time to put the uh, heads uh, back on. But one thing about the head gaskets is make sure that you put the uh, proper head gasket on the right side. This one has an R right, right on the head gasket, just like that. This one has an L right and left. Left is always the driver's side, right is always the passenger side. Okay, the heads are back on, we placed them back down with the new head gaskets. The heads turned out, uh, checked out fine. So, uh, Jason, talk about what the torque sequence is. Okay, so on these 4.0, Toyota 4.0s, the torque sequence, like always, you start in the middle and do an X and work your way out, but um, using several steps, this is verbatim and anything you look up, using several steps, tighten the head bolts to 27 foot pounds, and then you're gonna do a 180 degree turn on all of the bolts and start in the middle, do an X and work your way out. Okay, uh, see we have new head bolts also, so we're gonna take these old ones out. And oh, that's your new ones. ones, yeah. Torque down, the spec. Now, time, we're gonna clean the mating surface for the timing chain cover and uh, start putting this thing back together. Okay, next we're laying the cams back into their uh, into their spots. Um, don't forget to put this um, tensioner right in the middle. It's easier just to lay it down all as a three-piece unit connected by the chain. Let's see if I can do it with this side as well. 
this unit together. We have the tensioner right in the middle. Hold that so I can get a good grip. There we go. Okay. Come over here, lay it down. Lay it down and it's home. This 12 started. Once it started, then we can start putting the uh, cam bearings on and we'll lower the cam bearings down and slowly and easily get these cams to go down together. Okay, we kept the two cams and the chain as one unit with the tensioner in the middle. We're just carrying it all as one unit and we're going to lay it back where it goes. Started by hand. Uh, we marked with whiteout where the cams are in relation to the chain, uh, but uh, you can just use the timing marks if you want. Either way, it doesn't matter as long as the timing is, is right. Be fine. But we're going to start putting the cam bearings back in. We're going to tighten them down evenly, starting with the middle out. So do these four first, then do those ones and those ones. Okay, got the guide back on, the two 12 millimeter bolts tightened up. The cams are tightened down now as well, as long with the, uh, the, tan uh, the, the tensioner for the cams. Um, now the guides on the inside, they go right here. Do not put them where they're facing um, out like this. They don't go that way. They go facing in with the lips towards the block. Okay, here is the timing chain tensioner for the larger timing chain. Uh, you see this little swing right here. You're gonna hold this up as you compress this. And you're gonna wait till those holes line up. And just shove a small Allen or a pin in the way. Now the timing marks over here are back where they need to be. Uh, the orange link, that mark, orange link between those two marks. And the yellow link where that dot is. Uh, it's hard to see, it's covered in paint, but there's a little circle dot in there. But we're about to put the timing chain tensioner on now. I'll just probably just do all this in one take. Timing chain tensioner. And the swing arm. Okay. Swing arm back on that stud. Make sure that the slack side of the timing chain is on this side to allow room for the swing arm. And we're going to put these bolts in. It would be easier to see when you're doing it yourself, but it's pretty obvious where the tensioner goes. Yeah. Let's right. get these bolts probably lined up. Go ahead and tighten them. Okay, now that the timing is um, timing chain is back on, timing is set. I'm gonna pair this timing cover to get it going. So basically, this old silicone all is gonna scrape off. We're gonna put a nice liberal coating of um, silicone on the mating surfaces. Don't forget, also need it on the bottom where it meets the oil pan. Just like the two ZR engines, there's um, gaps between the block and the head. So that little piece out there, extra silicone goes in that same area, both sides. Okay, as we're siliconing this, uh, don't forget, uh, we do need to change this O-ring right here, which we're about to do. Also, there's another O-ring. Right here, change those. 
Okay. Now, uh, you are going to notice that the um, oil pump right here has some flat sides, much like the crank. It does need to be lined up with the crank in the right orientation in order for this timing cover to go on. It's a little tricky, but just be patient. You'll get it on if you get the right orientation. Ideally, you'd want the flat end facing straight up, right there, and the crank uh, flat end facing up as well. Now that it's butted up, Jack, of course, lined up the oil pump first try. It's because he's amazing. Uh, time to put on all the uh, 12 nuts and bolts that keep this timing cover attached to the block. Be sure to tighten up the bolts that go up from the oil pan a little firm, just a little tight first before you start tightening these ones up because it wants to seal on the bottom and the side uh, at the same time. Okay, we're almost to the intake. Before you do the intake, don't forget to put the water outlet on in the back with new gaskets. That should be easy if you did all the steps we said earlier. Next is the AC compressor bracket. Uh, don't forget, that's the uh, five 14 millimeter bolts. Pretty self-explanatory. Okay, don't forget to reattach to the down pipes on the exhaust. It can be done basically any time after the, the heads are torqued down. Just the, the six bolts. If you took the brackets off, don't forget to do the upper two bolts on the brackets as well. It is on, now time for the AC compressor. They go back on. It's basically new, but uh, the head gasket set came with a new gasket, so we just replaced that anyway. It has to come off anyway, so no reason not to. Just uh, put those 12s and 10s back in. Hopefully you uh, saved them or marked it, you know where they go. There's a whole bunch of them, all right. Okay, water pump is on. Time for the harmonic balancer, power steering pump, and alternator. Okay, got the alternator, harmonic balancer, and power steering pump back on. Now time for the idler pulleys. This is the, uh, the shallow one. Remember, this is the one that's different than um, two of the other ones. That's the one, that's the one that goes the bottom, sorry, uh, right here. The reverse thread one goes here, and the two that are the same go here and here. All the uh, pulleys are on, and the idler pulleys are. Time for the lower intake. We have new gaskets. That's uh, pretty self explanatory doing the uh, lower intake. Okay, have the lower intake on. All the 12 millimeter bolts are hooked up. Uh, next is going to be the valve covers. Um, if you, uh, if you can, put on the new valve cover gaskets and uh, the spark plug to the grommets uh, before you do that. Okay, valve covers are on. Uh, time for the uh, wire harness to come back down. Uh, don't forget the, uh, the fuel injectors, the variable valve timing solenoids, cam resistance sensors, um, all the coils, fire steering pump sensor right there, the uh, wall dipstick. 10 right there. Um, I think that's it for now. Okay, most of the wires are hooked up. Uh, the coils and spark plugs are, are next. Um, well, they're not next, but um, this is what's next. Put that hose back on. We're going to do the um, oil filter housing and thermostat housing. Hold those back on. Okay, right now is a good time to mention before you put the intake back on. Get new spark plugs. It's easier to do with the intake off than trying to do it after you put on the intake. Uh, next, you know, do the serpentine belt and put that uh, fan pulley back on while we're at it. Okay, serpentine belt is lined up. Next, we're going to put on the radiator hose right here, get the clamp up. We're going to lower down the radiator fan and shroud and then place this radiator uh, hose back on after. Okay, fan and fan shroud is on. The uh, 12 millimeter nuts are nice and tight. Next is the uh, radiator hose. And I'm gonna tighten down all the coils, put on the upper end. <coughs> While we're doing it, don't forget the O2 sensors. Okay, we have the upper intake off. Uh, don't forget to hook up the throttle again. Um, the two cooling lines for the idle air control. 
we got the bracket that goes here, the two 12 millimeter bolts. You see Jack is hooking up the uh, back brackets again. All the little tiny clips every so often. This one, purge valve, it's going back on. Um, we'll get the hose that goes onto the intake, uh, where, where the uh, air filter goes. And uh, also, yeah, there it is. Vacuum line for the brake booster. And you have the Allens, eight millimeter Allens and two 12 millimeter nuts. Okay, now time for the upper intake. Uh, sorry, the uh, air box to go back on. I'm gonna slide that guy back on. The 10 that goes there to there. That 10. And go right there. And don't forget that back in line for the fuel rail. Okay, if you followed all the steps that we did, you didn't skip forward, you didn't uh, skip into the video, and uh, you did it all correctly, it should start right up when you turn the key. Okay, thank you for watching. Hopefully it all worked out well for you. If it did, uh, please like and subscribe. If it didn't, uh, like and subscribe anyway. And ring yeah. that bell. I'll ring the bell. Thank you.